the electrodynamics and alternating current section of the physics paper starts with multiple choice question 1.8, which reads, an AC generator generates a current with a frequency of 50 hertz. The number of times that the maximum or peak current is produced in one second is, and what this requires is that we know the definition or have an understanding for what a frequency is, where we know that a frequency is the number of complete waves that are produced in one second. So when we see a frequency of 50 hertz, what that tells us is that there are 50 complete waves produced per second. And as we can see that in one wave, the maximum or the peak is achieved twice per wave, which means that in a frequency of 50 hertz, there are twice as many peaks achieved, which means that the correct answer here is option D, two times 50, 100. Question nine reads, a simplified diagram of an electrical machine is shown below. 9.1.1, is this machine a DC motor or a DC generator? And the giveaway here is the fact that this circuit, the external circuit, contains a battery. And as soon as we see that there is a battery, we know that this circuit must be for that of a motor because a motor is one that uses electrical energy to convert into mechanical energy. Question 9.1.2, write down the energy conversion that takes place within this machine or while this machine is in operation. And the correct answer there, as we've said, because this is a motor, it converts electrical energy, which it gets from that battery, into mechanical energy, mechanical energy being the energy of motion. So the conversion that takes place inside a motor is the conversion from electrical to mechanical energy. Question 9.1.3, write down the name of component A in the diagram. And the component A in the diagram is what is responsible for taking the current from the external circuit over here to the internal circuit, which is the coil that is inside the magnetic field. And that, as we can see very clearly, there is a split or there's a space between those two sides of the ring. So we say that this component is called either a split ring or another name for it is a commutator. It is either a split ring or a commutator. Both of these are what makes this into a DC motor. It converts direct current in the external circuit to direct current in the internal circuit, where the external circuit is this coil outside and the internal circuit is the coil within the magnetic field. Question 9.1.4 reads, in which direction will the coil shown in the diagram above rotate? Choose from clockwise or anti-clockwise. And in order to do this, what we need to see is we need to see that current flows from the positive terminal of the battery, this being con conventional current, flows through the commutator into the coil, the coil we call the internal circuit, and it flows around the coil. And so we indicate the direction of the current as it flows towards the negative terminal of the battery. Now, once we have an understanding for the direction that the current is flowing in, we can then also see that the external magnetic field is directed from north to south. And then what we have is we have the current that is flowing essentially into the page we have the external magnetic field that is directed from north to south, that is our magnetic field. And then using our left hand motor rule, we can see that the force is going to be exerted downward on this side of the coil and upward on this side of the coil. This is determined by pointing your middle finger in the direction of the current, your index finger in the direction of the magnetic field and then your thumb points in the direction of the force and since the force is exerted downward on this side of the coil and upward on this side of the coil our answer to 9.1.4 is that this coil is going to rotate counterclockwise or anti-clockwise again this is done using the left hand motor rule and we say that that coil rotates counterclockwise.
Question 9.2 reads, an electrical device is marked as 200 watts and 220 volts. 9.2.1 define the term RMS voltage and the definition as given in the guidelines. The RMS voltage is the alternating current voltage or potential difference which dissipates the same amount of energy or heat or power as an equivalent direct current voltage or potential difference. Question 9.2.2 asks us to calculate the resistance of this device and with, as with many electricity questions, there are a number of ways to solve this problem. The use of the formula P average is equal to V squared RMS over R is the only formula that will give you the answer directly. The other two formulae you would have had to first calculate the current and then use another formula. And we can use this because this voltage that has been given is always going to be the RMS voltage. Any marked voltage for a device is always an RMS voltage. And the power is given to us as 200 watts the RMS voltage given as 220 volts and the resistance being our unknown, we can then solve for to find that it is 242 ohms. This device is now connected to a 150 volt alternating current source, 9.2.3. Calculate the energy dissipated by the device in 10 minutes. Once again, we can do this in a number of ways and the you can see these options in the marking guidelines. The simplest option is to say that the work done or energy transferred is equal to the voltage squared multiplied by the time divided by the resistance of this device, where the voltage is given to us as 150, that value is squared. Time must always be given in seconds and therefore we say it is 10 minutes multiplied by 60 seconds per minute and that is divided by the resistance that we calculated in the previous question 242 and that then tells us that the work done or energy transferred is 55,785.12 joules. A question like this is marked according to the marking guidelines or 9.1.1 is very simply one mark for identifying it correctly as a motor and we know that in a motor electrical energy is converted to mechanical energy which was for two marks there. What is interesting to see is that there is positive marking from the above question so if you had made a mistake and called this a generator you could have still been awarded the two marks if you correctly identified the energy conversion in a generator as being electrical to mechanical. Question 9.1.3 asks for the name of the component and that is either a split ring or a commutator for one mark. 9.1.4 we were given two marks for using the left hand motor rule correctly to identify the direction as anti-clockwise. Question 9.2 then we get one mark for the correct formula, one mark for correct substitution, and one mark for the correct answer. Again, remember that the formula must be written as it is given in the formula sheet. And question 9.2.3, we are asked to calculate the power of the work done, where once again, there are two marks for an appropriate formula. The reason for this is that there are other options in which you first calculate the power and then you calculate the work done or you first calculate the RMS current and then the work done. So there would normally be a mark for each formula, but if you use this formula, you've got two marks for the formula, one mark for correctly substituting. And again, there's positive marking for this answer that you got from the previous question. And then finally, the correct answer, once again, important that it has the correct units. Question 9.2.1. Um, as with all definitions, it is important to get all the underlined words here correct. And as you can see, most of this is underlined. And as a result, we require the wording to be pretty much as is there to get those marks.